Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of National Council Conversations, our opportunity to talk about timely topics. Today, I am so pleased to be joined by Pat Coleman, the Executive Director of Behavioral Health Response in St. Louis, Missouri, and my colleague, Raina Taylor, who is our Vice President of Policy and Advocacy here at the National Council. And we're going to talk about a momentous thing that's been happening this year, that been building for the last few years. Uh, the creation of a new three digit line that will be available in every part of the country beginning in 2022 for anybody who's experiencing thoughts of suicide or having a mental health crisis. 988 will be the new national number that people can join and can call to get help. Maybe we'll start with a question for, uh, for you, Pat. Why is this a big deal? This is such a huge deal because everyone relates the three digit 911 to emergency services. And so to have a three digit number 988 for mental health and behavioral health services, it only makes sense. And I believe that it's going to help connect us uh, nationally in a way that we have never experienced before. So it's extremely exciting. So the cool thing is we're gonna be going from a 10 digit number to a three digit number. So that should make it easier for people to remember, but that's only the tip of the iceberg, right? Raina, what are some of the other kind of things that this brings along with it? So the, the addition of 988 sort of gives us an opportunity, right? It's an opportunity to, to strengthen the system, the continuity of care that uh, is available to those in the community with mental health and substance use. It's, it's the ability to have not only a, a crisis line, a suicide prevention line to call into, but then the ability to strengthen who's there for the long term, for the services that that person needs when they dial in, and the ability to be there for the people we serve and you know, to be able to strengthen the ability in our community to be there for anyone whenever they need it when they are in a mental health crisis. So Pat, I know part of what your agency does, right, is you answer calls. And um, do, 911, do, do emergency calls only happen during business hours? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> you know that uh, when someone is in a crisis or just dealing with mental health just in general, it does not have a timeline. It doesn't have a geographical location. Trust me, it doesn't discriminate at all. And so having 24 seven access to crisis services, um, especially with mental health, it is very key for our community. And serving a crisis line, you're at the front door to all of those services. And we are so the link to law enforcement as well. Yeah, and I would imagine you must hear from you know your staff who who run these lines what a difference it makes for people, for individuals and families who are having a crisis, right? Yes, yes, indeed. We're always getting feedback, uh, people thanking us and feeling so uh, grateful to have a service like this because it doesn't always lead to hospitalization. They're talking to someone on the other line that they trust, someone that is taking care of their in the moment care. And so it has been very critical to our community and the people that we serve, of course. Well, that's great. So what we can then do is make sure that when people are having a crisis that they can get the immediate response. But Raina, you talked about something also that's really important is making sure there's connection to ongoing care for people who need it. What is it, what is it gonna take to make that a reality? Well, you know, the, the, the thing is we have to think strongly about what that looks like in the community, the, the amount of capacity we need to meet the demand that's gonna come with 988. And so how do we implement or create a system that would be able to kind of um, be able to take care of those that call in um, with that greater capacity. And, you know, one of the models that we've seen, as Pat was alluding to, with that 24-7 care is the CCBHC model or Certified Community Be Behavioral Health Clinic model that, you know, uh, we've been leading the way in sort of uh, expanding across our nation. But that model in itself allows for 24-7 care. It doesn't discriminate to who you are, what time you call in, why you call in, or what you need. The thing is, is that someone is there, like Pat said. And so that's crucial to the implementation of 988. As well as other crisis services, we just have to make sure that it is an intact system to be able to meet the needs of those in the community. 
I don't know, I think I would throw that one back at you, Chuck, in terms of what else that looks like that we need to strengthen the community to meet the capacity or demand that 988 will put on this entire nation. Yeah, well, I think we have a great opportunity, right, to really engage in a broader conversation about what happens when somebody's having a mental health crisis and what's the appropriate way to respond to that. And I know over the years, I've had opportunity to talk to like sheriffs and uh, local law enforcement, and they don't, they recognize that people who are having a crisis don't belong in their system. The problem, unfortunately, is in most places, there aren't any options. And I think this gives us an opportunity to change that conversation, to think about what are non-police options in communities uh, that can be available and accessible. And Pat, I know you have some experience with this as well, don't you? Yes, indeed. And it will change the conversation. But in addition to that, it's just going to change the entire culture, uh, which is huge. We need to make sure that we're pulling culture up to the forefront of this. And the great thing about us working on this right now, I realize that we, we there, there are committees being set up. SAMHSA is leading some committees. And so they're really looking at trying to, they're having planning committees, let's just say that, uh, with each state. And so if we all can do this in such a coordinated way, that we definitely would not leave anyone behind. And currently we have the NSPL, the National Suicide Prevention Line, and to have them to be the central access to this, I think that is going to just change the, the whole course and whole the game of how we're doing and handling things. Again, going back to the culture and the culture in which we're working with uh, law enforcement in general. So Pat, you, you referenced SAMHSA, which is the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. That's a federal agency. But really to make this work, right, we're going to need the federal government working cooperatively with state legislatures and governors uh, and advocates and families and law enforcement. So over these next two years, as we move towards implementation, I think we have opportunities to have really broader discussions at the local level to think about how would we want to be treated if we or a member of our family were having a crisis and how to put together a system that's really responsive? Raina, what are some of the things that the National Council is doing to try to support this effort? We are talking to, to those at both the, the state level and then the federal level, but we're taking the expertise of people like Pat within states that have done this well. We take the, the best practices and we start to examine them. We see what happened in the history of 911 and implementation. And what we're coming to, to realize as National Council is that uh, we need to lead the way in implementation. We need to show that it's not just a number and that is wonderful that we have made that step forward as 988. But what we need to do in terms of state legislation as well as federal legislation to help the implementation of 988 so that there is that continuity of care. And so what we have been doing is talking to both you know, associations in, in the states to see what they've been doing in terms of implementation of crisis services, as well as examining what we can do from the federal level to look at the implementation and perhaps federal grants in, around the implementation of 988. And so National Council is taking the step that this is, this is the point at which we have an opportunity and we have to capitalize on the opportunity, as Pat said, to make sure that those that call in have a path forward and that we aren't leaving people behind. Now, the nice part is that Pat alluded to, there's no discrimination when it comes to mental health crises. And, and the, the beauty is there's, um, there is bipartisan or no discrimination in terms of the legislation for behavioral health. 988 passed and is in law, and that is because it had bipartisan support. What we need to do is move forward and capitalize on that bipartisan support for the implementation phase of 988. So yes. can I add to that, Chuck? Oh, sure. like come on, that. Pat, come on. <laughs> the great thing about it uh, with National Council being involved, of course, you know, that's our national behavioral health organization. And then so they're very well hooked into our state associations. And so that's where the power is added with those state associations. And then they're able to work with the state to move directly up to the National Council and to me, that has been, that is how we have succeeded around the different states. Um, we are blessed to have a very active state association uh, with the Missouri Coalition. And so with things starting there, 
and then feeding up to the National Council. And then you are connecting us to the legislation that we need federally. I just, uh, just the, um, uh, what I want to say, I'm just saying just the, the, just the whole setup uh, I know I am very hopeful, and I know that we're going to be successful at this. I know. Well, I hope so too, Pat, because we know that for too many people right now, uh, they don't have options. We want to make sure that people can access care when and where they need it, that it's the right care, uh, and that they're safe and their families are healthy and whole. Thank you both so much for joining me today. Like most things that originate in Washington, it's not going to end here. Uh, we're going to have lots of opportunities to think about what this means becoming a reality over the next two years. Uh, but I know working together that we're going to be successful. So thank you both so much. <laughs>